Hi, welcome back to more zany, crazy question answer time. And we are going to begin with... <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, I want to say your name is pronounced Game V Ing W, but I'm really... I know you've told me this like two or three times now, and I actually looked through my inbox, like my whole inbox of messages, to uh, figure out if you ever sent me how to pronounce your name, and it doesn't seem like you ever sent me there, so it must have been by some other form of communication that I've just forgotten now. But yeah, I'm so sorry if I'm getting your name pronunciation wrong. I have terrible memory. So anyways, what is the chemical compound for the gas created during the mating ritual of Shy Guys during Yoshi Moon in December at the Mushroom Kingdom? How does the sub pure substance help the ritual in the ways known by science, and why is it created? Does this gas have any harmful effect to the surrounding environment? Can this contribute to any other traditions of any other creature in the surrounding environment? Bleep it, that's the only swear word out of all of these questions, I'm pretty sure. How about I just ask, how you doing? Well, I'm going to answer all those questions, those other questions first. I'm just going to say, let's assume that that gas created during the mating ritual of the Shy Guys and stuff is methane, and that pretty much answers all the other questions. And then how am I doing? I am doing quite well. It is 2.14 a.m., and I am answering a whole bunch of random questions. And I was actually so eager to do this that I almost considered doing this before I reached 500 subscribers. But, uh, you know, now that I've actually hit the number, then it doesn't really matter anymore. <laughs> um, bleh. If the answer to this question is the answer to the previous question, how does that answer the question stated below that answer? Use the below answer to answer why the answer you gave this question makes sense to be an answer. Well, the thing is that the answer to the last question is not the same as the answer to this question, therefore that makes the rest of your questions about that invalid. Uh, yeah. Now, let me see. Do you have the patience to answer all my annoying questions? Explain your choice. Explain how you explained your choice. Now explain how you answered the previous question. Now unsubscribe for Nintendo Capri Sun. Now explain why you did. Only if you answer all these questions, you may resubscribe to Nintendo Capri Sun. Do you comply? Most of those were not questions. So yes, I do have the patience to answer all of them because there were only two. And the second question, do you comply? No, I do not. I'm sorry. <laughs> Deluxe Flame. Favorite game. I'm I, I'm usually caught up between, or like recently I've been caught up between Skyward Sword and Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, but I really think that it's probably, like I've thought about this a lot, and I think that Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door is my real favorite, because Skyward Sword's pretty good, but I felt like a, there was something about it that was missing, even though it's probably my favorite of the Zelda games. It just felt like the dungeons felt like they were shorter and they were less complicated than usual, and like it sort of felt like there was uh, less variety between the dungeons in a way, like the spots from one dungeon to the next, even though there were improvements over, like, say, Twilight Princess and Ocarina of Time in going to the next dungeon. But, uh,. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, whenever I think what is my favorite game of all time, that's usually the first one that comes up in my mind. There are just so many great moments in that game, and the whole thing is just so fun, and I need to do a Let's Play of that at some point, but I want to do a few other ones before that, and I definitely want to wait until I have the best equipment that I can have to do that, because if I was going to do a Let's Play of that game, it is my favorite game, and I would like to do it justice, because it is that great. Favorite character out of all the characters in that game? Pennington the Penguin. Oh, from Chapter 7. Pennington is so awesome, I would totally be his friend. He is the coolest guy. He is so funny. Oh. I want to be Pennington's friend. He just makes me smile inside and outside. He is so funny. <laughs> oh, I'm actually laughing at this because he's so fun. All right, least favorite game. Um, Yeah, let's follow that up, that last question up with an immediate downer. I'm going to say... The thing that makes this question so hard to answer is that whenever I think of, like, worst game ever, I think Superman 64 or Mario's Time Machine or something, but those games are so bad that they're actually funny and almost good because of how bad they are. Uh, and then if I, if I try to think of any games that I legitimately haven't enjoyed, I'll think, well, this game, I, maybe I didn't give it enough of a chance and I would like it if I played it a bit more. 
which was actually the case with Okami. Whenever I played Okami for the first time, I played it for like 30 minutes, and I was like, man, this game looks like it would be really boring. Why would I play this? And then I played the rest of it, and it was mind-blowingly awesome. So, I don't know. Like, And then there are plenty of games where I like I play them, and I'm like, man, I don't really like this game that much, but I'm sure other people like this game, and I can totally see why. So, I don't know. I think... Legitimately, I think the worst game that I've ever played... No, it might not be the worst game I've, I've ever played, but the the worst time I can remember having with a game, the one that I, that I think... Just the one game that I can remember having no fun with playing at all recently on has been Legend of Spyro, uh, A New Beginning. And once again, I can see why people would like that game, sort of. But as a game, it is so incredibly dull, so incredibly monotonous, and the colors are bland, and the music is bland, and... It's like, it's, it's a game that's so incredibly boring that you can't even make fun of how boring it is, because there's nothing to make fun of. And that's why I made a blind Let's Play of it, and then six episodes in, I was like, this is total crap, I need to stop this right now. So that might be a cheap answer. I'm not sure if it is or not, but that's just the worst game that I can remember th that I that I can just remember not enjoying at all. Uh, and then least favorite character out of all the characters in that game. Hmm, that's a toughie. Probably the boss that you didn't get to see me fight. I did play up to the first big boss in the game, which is like the one in Dante's freezer who looks just like the devil and he's such a stupid... Uh, whenever I was commentating over that, I just... I could not commentate at all. And whenever I finally did beat the boss, I was like, sexual intercourse you! That's exactly what I said. Which I guess would have been a kind of fitting ending for the whole series if I did find a way to keep the, the, the video for that, but... Yeah. Just sexual intercourse, that whole game. Man, that was just crap to play through. And then, name of character and game that is offspring of those answers. That is a really interesting, weird question, and I like it. Uh, Alright, well, if Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door plus The Legend of Spyro, A New Beginning combined as a name, that would probably be something like The Legend of Paper Spyro, A New Door or something. I don't know. And then, if Pennington and the Devil mated, they would probably be, like, Satanton or something. That would be a terrible name. Goodness, no. And I can just picture a demon penguin detective, can't you? That would be a great character. Maybe not. I, I don't know. So, hello, the monkey overlords. Does that make you a primate prime minister? Ha 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 No. Can you say hi to me through one of your videos? Hi, the monkey overlords. Sonic Yellow 5 asks, What is the meaning of life? Asking this because of the 40-second question. That is, I like your way of thinking, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I've read one of those books, and I really ought to read the rest of them. I just really enjoyed that. Meaning of life. I'm just going to quote something that I heard somewhere once, and I think this is a really fitting answer. I don't know who said this, but it's a quote that I heard. So, the meaning of life is that we don't know what the meaning of life is. I think that's just a really great answer. So, that's what I'm answering, even though it's not technically my answer. Sonic Star 505 asked a whole bunch of questions, and I just decided to put them all together. Are you secretly female? Not as far as I know. Pretty sure I'm not. Are you allergic to turtles? My turtool was. He died, cry. I'm sorry to hear about your turtool. Uh, I am not allergic to turtles. Uh, I am, however, allergic to Kleenex. Just kidding. I'm allergic to red dye and dust, but they don't really affect me much. Do you like rice? I do like rice. I like re eating rice with chopsticks. Do you hate me? I have no reason to hate you, so I do not hate you. I do love you, though. Do you love me? Yes. I love you. And I love all people. Or at least I try to. Like, it's hard to love my enemies, but I will still attempt. Do you have a wife? No, I don't have a wife. Is your wife female, or is she a Cadis? If I had a wife, 
she probably would not be a Cadis because Cadises are very spiky and that would just it would just hurt so much to hug her. I just couldn't do it, man. I just couldn't do it. Do you know how to spell the? Yes. Do you use lampshades as toilets? No, but that is a good idea. That would make my poop a lot lighter. Do you like staring at the sun? I did, but no, I have to use a braille keyboard. I don't like staring at the sun. I occasionally like, you know, glancing at the sun whenever it's behind clouds or something, but I still don't look at it for very long, just in case. My eyes aren't that great anyways, so let's not try to make them worse. And then, what's up with that Super Genius game? What do you mean, what's up with the Super Genius game? Well, I'll tell you the, the whole story behind it, I guess, because... I just subscribed to Super Genius at some point, and uh, I just thought that he was a really fun Let's Player. He's just, you know, he's got this really unique style, and it's full of memes, and it's like non-stop talking, and it's impressive to me. It really, his commentary really impresses me, how you can keep thinking of things to say, and just not, like, no breaks at all are taken, and it's just, it's, it, yeah, it just amazes me. And so, I decided it was worth making him some kind of gift, and I started making a game about him, like, almost immediately after, I don't know whether it was, uh, right after he did a question and answer thing, like, about Let's Playing tips, or it might have been right after, uh, right after the Josh Jepson Super Genius co-op episode where they went through the roasting rails, it might have been right after that that I started making the game, but, yeah, I started with the minecart level because of the moment in that let's play in that specific episode because I was just like oh man that's one of my favorite episodes of any let's play ever I just love that part where he goes through the whole level without talking and he just is a total bro and it is just so awesome uh, and then let me think and then I did the uh, I did I tried a whole bunch of things actually I wrote down a whole bunch of plans for the game and I had a few ideas thrown around with, like, Cloud Mario and the Flip Swap Galaxy and uh, some other things. I even tried thinking of maybe using other memes of his that he's, or at least other memes that he's used in the game, like So Sad, Bad Dad. But none of them ever ended up being in the game because I couldn't code something or I, I felt like I didn't have enough time or I just couldn't find a way to work it in. Uh, so eventually... Like, I didn't even originally intend for the game to be a, a birthday present to Super Genius, but then I realized that his birthday was coming up. So I put the game together and finalized a few different things, made finishing touches, basically, and then sent it to him. And it was really interesting, because I actually, like, rushed it together really quickly the morning of his birthday, and then sent it to him right before I went to school. That's how that worked out. And getting a message back from him, that was the coolest thing, and then he actually tweeted the game shortly afterwards, which also made my day, and I hope I made his day as well. I always hope that he has a fantastic day, just like he tells all of his fans at the end of all of his videos to have a fantastic day, and then I go and try to have a fantastic day. He's just motivational like that. Hello, Random Plank. If you were to hide a dead body, where would it be? I need some advice. Uh, well, are you planning on using the body again, or do you just want to dispose of it? Because if you're just going to dispose of it, then you probably want to, like, chop it up into little bits and maybe hide it someplace like that, because there are tons of possibilities if you just chop it up into the tiny pieces. Because you could put it into a chili, kind of like Cartman did in that one episode of South Park. Or maybe you could, like, uh, you know, dump it into a river. That would be, you know, that's one way to do it. But if you're actually planning on using the body again for something, then I don't know, because it's harder to hide full dead bodies. So maybe try an oven. Like you could, if, if nobody's going to use an oven that you know of, then try hiding a body in an oven. You kind of have to bend it, though. That might be a little bit awkward, but I think you could manage. <laughs> I don't know anything about this. Uh... So I'll probably just end this video there, and now let's go to part four. I'm scratching my back.